I'm Brad from Des Moines, Iowa, and I'm one half of the founding team of RoboFlow, a startup working on computer vision infrastructure. My co-founder, Joseph, will be joining us in the Q&A, uh, but I'll get started. Uh, so you may have heard of computer vision in the context of some of the, some of the innovations that it's enabling, like self-driving cars or early stage cancer detection. But the use cases for computer vision actually go far beyond that. In fact, we believe that computer vision is a foundational technology, much like the internet, and that it's going to transform nearly every industry. Unfortunately, it's such early days, there's just not that much infrastructure built up around it yet. There are some companies focused on pieces of the puzzle, like labeling or training, but there's this big piece in the middle that every team is left to reinvent for themselves. We felt this pain point when we were building our own computer vision apps, and that's why we built RoboFlow to eliminate the boilerplate computer vision code so that teams can focus on their domain-specific problems. What that means in practice is that you drop your data into RoboFlow and we perform common tasks. We help you find and fix common errors. We help you generate more training data. And we let you easily use your data across many common machine learning models. This gives developers superpowers. You no longer have to be a team the size of Google to use computer vision in your project. And in fact, we as a team of two were able to use it to build Product Hunt's AR app of the year. We just launched publicly in January, but we're already showing signs of traction with over 600 users and almost $1,000 in monthly recurring revenue. But what we're most excited about is what our use early users are telling us. One of our first paying customers told us that after he integrated RoboFlow into his training pipeline, he was able to delete half of the code from his project. And one of the first teams using RoboFlow told us that it reduced the time to experiment with a new machine learning model from a week to a day. We're excited to continue building this out. It's still early days, and we'll be launching one-click labeling and training integrations later this spring. We'd love introductions to any teams using computer vision who might make great early customers or any investors who might be inv interested in building a relationship and potentially investing in the future. So with that, I'd like to invite Joseph to join us for the Q&A and I'm excited to answer your questions. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much, uh, super cool project. So how Thanks. is this different from like OpenCV in the cloud? Yeah, so we're really focused on like the deep learning aspect. So OpenCV is kind of like traditional um, like line detection and that sort of thing. But over the last 10 years, we've gone into this revolution where computer vision is able to do things that it was never able to do before. And that's enabling all these really awesome use cases. Got it. So, so can you like walk me through the audience that like does not know how to use like Python computer vision libraries, but like is training their models like in the cloud? Um, yeah, so like I, I can show you, um, am I still screen sharing? Um, can you see my screen still? Uh, yep. I have a slide pulled up here. Um, this is an example of some of the data sets that people have uploaded to RoboFlow so far. So you can see that it's like a whole wide range of things. Um, people are doing it to using it to do everything from agriculture to medicine and even some like fun applications like identifying sushi in a mobile app. Um, and so it's like, you know, we have 600 users and we haven't seen two teams that are working on the same pro custom project yet. Okay, cool. Uh, is it possible to do a live demo? Yeah, um, I think Joseph has one uh, queued up on his screen. So I'm gonna stop sharing mine and uh, let him take over from here. Great. Everyone, so uh, I'm gonna do a live demo. Just give me a quick hang nod, Laura, if you can make sure you can hear me, see my screen, everything's okay. Yes. Awesome. So, all right, so for today's demo, what I'm gonna show you is I actually have a bunch of chess data. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be teaching a machine to identify chess pieces. So on my local machine, you'll see here, I have a bunch of chess boards and these are labeled in VOC XML format, defining where in the image, the bounty box that defines each of these specific pieces. Um, now, in this case, my images are already labeled. And so I will uh, upload them to RoboFlow. And by the end of this, we'll be able to one-click create a trained model. So let me pull up RoboFlow. Uh, I'll create a new data set. This data set is gonna be called Chess Lara. It's an object detection data set. My annotation class, we're finding pieces, so I'll call that pieces. Now, the next thing that uh, RoboFlow will do for me is perform sorts of checks that I, common checks that I need to perform on any of my given annotations. So for example, if I drop my images and annotations directly into RoboFlow, it processes and does some things like, hey, heads up, you might have some errors that you weren't aware of with your annotations. And this is a common problem. Labelers don't have 100% accuracy. There's some things that you can rule-based check. So, so just um, yeah. curious, as we walk through this, like which are the features that uh, you could not live without? Like if you could reduce the product down to one feature, uh, which would you keep? 
Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things we've seen our users find a ton of value in is a data set health check of being able to identify common errors and problems that they're seeing in their in their images and in the end in their in their annotations. Um, I can actually show you that once I've, I've uploaded this. Let me just give you a quick show here that, as you can see, one of the errors that it found is, hey, you have this class here where there's only like one A, one R, one B, one R, uh, et cetera, which, which says to me that I might have an image in here that's of the wrong type. So actually, if I look, I say, oh, I have a Boggle image here in my chest data set, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nuke that. Then I also see that I have some images that aren't labeled, and for the purposes of building a trained model, I only want labeled images in this data set. Now, once I upload, I'm prompted to be able to follow best practice, like creating a train test split. Um, and so now that this is uploaded, let me show you the, the, the killer features that we've seen uh, users really take to. One of those is the ability for um, checking the health of any given data set. So commonly enterprises will have um, images that are not of high enough quality and they'll either send those to be labeled and then they'll get images back that weren't even useful for the problem they were working on or perhaps it's informing the types of decisions of pre-processing and augmentation techniques that the uh, data scientists or computer vision or developer teams are aware of. So in this example, I mean, I only have 20 images, but I had no null examples. I didn't have any missing annotations. I have 267 annotations, about three, 13 on average per image. My average image size is three megabytes. Uh, I can see here the class balance. Now in this given data set, my images are all the same size. So it just looks like this black box because they're all laid on top of each other. Uh, but in an example where I have images of varying sizes, like here, you can see that we did demonstrate to you the size and various um, different dimensions you see, which informs resize decisions in pre-processing. Uh, we have an annotation heat map, and we actually use this annotation heat map for this specific problem to realize that white queen, for example, uh, was dramatically underrepresented and not moved enough in this given data set. The other thing that I quickly want to show is I can generate more training data with RoboFlow. We had a large steel company use just eight images to generate an entirely new data set of 300 images and create a 95% accurate bounding box uh, detector for a specific problem that they had that improved their uh, steel production processes. And the way they did that was they said, okay, you know, for my problem, it might make sense to have random rotation, uh, brightness, and 90 degree rotations. And then I can you know, create anywhere from zero to five I'll just do two, so I'll have 40 images created. Uh, I can give this specific version a name, uh, but I'll just go ahead and generate it. Okay, cool. Uh, just to flag, I think we might be coming up on time. So just wanted to throw uh, one last question out there, which is I, I think it's really hard in some cases to build like a useful product in this space that's like both targeted enough to hit like the, the few users that will benefit from it, but also not so general that like it just feels useful for anyone. So I'm just curious, kind of like as you grapple with that quandary, who what's like the perfect um, final version of this that you would kind of like uh, summarize in one sentence, so to speak? It's been interesting. Um, so we thought our, our customer was going to be like these data science teams that were already working on computer vision. But we found that our sweet spot is really technical product teams that are good at like building projects, but don't necessarily have computer vision expertise. And we think as this moves from like a research and development, like research thing to a product thing, that those are the teams that are going to find the most value because like these are tools that they would otherwise have to build for themselves rather than spending time on their actual project that they want to be working on. Um, so it's really those product teams that we've found like really early success with that have found it super useful. So okay, computer great. vision in three clicks. <laughs> Custom Thanks computer so much. vision in three clicks. Yeah, awesome.